Hi Susie, my name is Connor, I'm 31. I'm at a bit of a crossroads in my life. I'm looking to re-enter the workforce and I could really use your help. I'm Susie Welch, author, journalist, and career expert. It's crazy. My mission, to help people build the careers of their dreams if they only knew how. So you've been out of the workforce for about two years. Yeah. What is going on? I guess I've been depressed. Sometimes life falls apart. Something bad happens and we have to put our careers on pause to survive. That's what happened to Connor. I started a blog about music in college um, and it kind of took over my collegiate life. I spent all my time blogging. Um, it, it turned into a, a, an amazing adventure really because I, I started putting on concerts um, and traveling to Austin for South by Southwest. Um, and in New York for CMJ and working with bands directly and off the success, relative success of that, um, I started a record label. At age? 23. Or... Huh. Felt good? Oh yeah, it felt great. I told myself that no matter what happened with it, I could at least tell my kids that I was the guy in his 20s who started a vinyl record label and how cool that would be. Yeah. You know, and then it all sort of collapsed for a lot of different reasons, but one, because the music industry is difficult and I kind of just fell out of love with blogging too and, and writing about new music. You burnt out and then some other stuff got piled on top of it. So at the same time as the, the businesses were faltering, my relationship, um, the longest relationship, the person that I thought I was going to marry, yeah. ended. All of these kind of very challenging, difficult things that used to give me purpose in my life right. all came to an end sort of all at once. I would do literally nothing all day. Oh my God. Oftentimes if you haven't suffered depression um, and if you're not familiar with it clinically, you think of it as a sadness. So I think it's important to realize that it's a legitimate illness and it needs to be treated as such. When was the moment of reckoning, if there was one? I basically developed a panic disorder. Um, yeah. it, I started becoming kind of like a hypochondriac a little bit. Yeah. That was basically my rock bottom. Connor's career dilemma is so common because life happens. Coming back from a personal crisis is hard. It takes twice as much effort as a regular job search. Connor also has a big resume gap to explain, and he can't skate by it. He needs to address it. He needs a well-crafted, authentic story with the right level of detail, which assures employers he's ready, willing, and able to work. Somebody, an interviewer might say to you, there are some lost years here. Right. You might be able to use it to your advantage and to say, yeah, those are the lost years. I learned so much during them. Okay. I had been an entrepreneur for 10 years, and uh, I sort of fell out of love with what I was doing. It wasn't monetizable. And I took a period where I had to regroup. And this is what I learned about myself that's gonna make me a fantastic addition to this company. And the way you frame it is the most important thing. I learned a lot. I got myself centered. I learned a lot about myself I needed to know. Depression put his life on hold for a few long years, but now he's well, and he's trying to figure out a way back into the workforce. When was your last interview? Real job interview? Probably about five or six years ago. Oh. Okay, you've been out of it for a while with the interview thing. Yeah, so I guess I don't even really know how to interview anymore. I always get my foot in the door. Right. I almost always get an interview. Okay. Um, but they almost always take somebody with, with actual sort of real world um, corporate experience. I think something's happening in the interview and I think what's happening is people are sensing your lack of self-confidence and your inner emotionality, okay? He's got a lot of self-doubt and interviewers can smell that a mile away. That's why he needs to focus on insane levels of interview prep and on presenting himself with confidence. He's just going to have to fake it till he makes it for a while. How should I prepare in terms of body language? The first thing you gotta do is greet them the right way. So let's practice, um, I, I'm interviewing you, I want you to greet me right now, okay? With your best physicality, all right? Here we go. Oh, hi, Connor, nice to meet you. You too. Eh. C minus, okay? <laughs> C minus, this is what it looked like to me. Okay, you're nervous and you go like this. You too. Okay, right. no, no, okay, let's do it again. All right. See, it's great to meet you. I'm glad to be here. Fabulous. A plus. Okay, much better. I always thought that I was pretty good at interviews. I'm, I'm good conversationally. I'm definitely going to be working on body language, working on uh, like practicing for interviews. How would you describe your life right now? Uh, much better. Okay, <laughs> because? Uh, because I feel like I have a purpose where I feel like I didn't before. You decided to go back to school. Okay, so let's hear it. What are you doing? So I'm in a tech academy um, called Career Devs. Um, it's a nine-month computer science program. You're learning to code. 
basically. The good news is that Connor has already taken a great first step by attending coding school. I 100% recommend doing something structured like that to give your life an organizing principle and momentum. But you know what I'm gonna recommend to you? Go on interviews anyway, just to practice, just to get yourself out there and just to build your self-confidence. Start putting yourself out there again. You've got to, okay? And it's all part of this process of, of Connor 2.0. I was very nervous about entering the workforce. I still am nervous about it. So what Susie said about it um, will really help me to kind of calm my nerves, feel more prepared, and uh, not just lull me into a sense of preparedness, but force me to, to do things to make myself more prepared. Connor has a lot to offer. He just has to find a way to make his case. I'll be rooting for him. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fine. I hear that you have some big news. Uh, I do. This is my technically my first day on the new job. Yay! That's fantastic. How do you feel? Very excited. What's the job? So the job is a uh, it's a music startup called Quadio in um, in Brooklyn. It's a social media social music app. It sounds to me like it's a, at that intersection of what you went back to school for, which is uh, coding and engineering and your first great love, which is music. Right, exactly. What did it feel like when you got the job offer? I mean, I think there was a long time there where you wondered how you were going to get back into the working world. I don't know, I couldn't stop smiling. I, you know, it just it just happened so fast. I mean, I'm still, I'm, I'm here in New York right now looking at apartments. Yeah, it's just crazy exciting. I gave you some tough love, I think. I, I didn't go easy on you, that is for sure. What happened after that meeting? After our conversation, I had a long train ride back to Rhode Island. I had a lot to think about. Meeting with you was an amazing first step because it, part of me didn't want to do it. I was nervous and, you know, it, it, like that was a real first step for me. I felt engaged, I felt motivated, I felt just incredible and kind of ready to, to tackle um, the next steps. All right, well, Connor, it has been fantastic talking to you. I love your story and I'm really excited. Congratulations to you. Have a great first day and first year in your new life. Thank you very much, Susie. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.